Hey, this is Chris from Rectic Talk, and so we're going to do something that might be like a thread or it might be like a contest, but it's from our friend over in the UK, Martin the Vinyl Scavenger, who's been, I don't know how long he's been scavenging for vinyl, but he's been on YouTube for like 10 years now, which is like four times as long as I've been on YouTube. And so he kind of described that what he wanted us to do was basically go down a rabbit hole. I'm not 100% sure what I've got planned here is what Martin was looking for. I hope you like this, Martin. So kind of my idea was I'm, I'm just going to kind of haphazardly work my way through some records. It's sort of like, like if you went to Wikipedia to read an article. I'm going to go read an article about rabbits. And then like two hours later, I'm going to catch myself reading about inbred members of the Habsburg dynasty. I've gone down a complete rabbit hole. I wonder what happened with my last two hours. Now, I'm not going to make a video that's two hours long, but I'm going to go down a rabbit hole. I'm going to start with a rabbit record. And so this is going to be the worst of Jefferson Airplane, which of course was a comp of Jefferson Airplane, which of course features one of their famous songs, White Rabbit. Uh, which came out in the Surrealistic Pillow um, album back in 1967. Um, Grace Slick, of course, was the singer, and there's been a lot of female singers over the years that have um, had their take at singing it. And one of them is uh, Corin Tucker from Slater Kinney. I know she's done it live quite a bit. Um, and so here's a live album by Slater Kinney, Live in Paris, uh, from 2015. Now, it turns out that if they played White Rabbit at this concert, they didn't put it on this record. But, hey, um, I, I saw them do White Rabbit live in concert. Um, of course, I didn't see their concert in Paris because I don't live in France. Um, another famous concert, much more famous than probably that one, is this Cure album, Paris. Um this was put out the same time as the Cure live album called Show. Show had like the hits on it, and Cure Paris had more was more of a deep track uh, selection. I actually like this record better. Um, and then while we were thinking about bands playing in Europe, we've got the American band out of Chicago, Local H. Uh, they were live in Europe, and they even have a nice little map talking about all the different places they played in. So they played in Paris. This album is a compilation of several of their shows. They didn't have any songs from Paris. Um, they did have some songs from Mar their show in Marseille on here. And then we'll look at the, um, the tracks that are on this record. And so Bound for the Floors on side two. That's the, probably the most famous local age song. It was a bit of a alternative rock hit in the U.S. back in the 90s. You got High Fly and MF. Guess what MF stands for? But I'm going to talk about a side one, song number three, Heavy Metal Bake Sale. So, of course, we could focus on the bake sale part of it. I could go down a rabbit hole with Sebado. Uh, Sebado with Luke Barlow, who was also in Dinosaur Jr. and Folk Implosion and lots of bands like that. But instead, I'm going to veer off into the heavy metal part of it. And what's the original heavy metal album? Well, the original heavy metal album is from Birmingham. And the original heavy metal album, at least by a lot of people, I know this will get argued about, but Black Sabbath's debut, Black Sabbath. Um, I don't have it on the Vertigo label. I've got it on the Warner Brothers label. Um, but hey, um, Black Sabbath gave rise to tons and tons and tons of bands that came out over the past 50 or so years. People playing super slow, people playing super fast, but generally people playing heavy music somehow. And so some of these bands are doomy, doom metal bands. And one of our very recent record from the Sub Pop Single of the Month Club is by this band, Sun. Now you might think their name is Sun-O, but apparently the O... And the parentheses after the O are silent. Um, and so and I looked it up on Discogs. Uh, so the print's in black, so it's pretty much the print's pretty much illegible. You can barely see it in real life. You can't see it on the camera at all. You got sort of this uh, slightish, slight green, clearish 
uh, vinyl, sort of the Coke bottle green, which is one of my favorite vinyl colors. Um, and so there's a couple songs on here called Evil Chuck and Ranji Warrior. And I looked it up on Discogs, and apparently people are already asking 50 bucks for this single because the only way you could get it was by being a member of the Sub Pop Single of the Month Club. So I guess all the people who are members to Flip are starting to flip them. But of course, when I'm thinking about Sub Pop, I'm thinking about famous bands on Sub Pop. And who is the most famous band on Sub Pop? Well, that would be Nirvana. And so I'm going to show you a Nirvana single. Now, this is not a Sub Pop single. This is a David Geffen single. So this is, of course, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And the reason why I'm showing this particular single is because this is one of my prouder finds uh, digging through records. I paid 10 cents uh, for this single. I was in a place I refer to as the crazy, chaotic, a good antique store. And so it's this antique store probably an hour or so away from my house. They've got all kinds of junk tables outside the place. Um, they've got stuff inside. So they've got like a section with clocks, a selection with radios. They've got a bunch of records. The LPs are pretty crappy. They had a couple thousand unsleeved 45s just sitting around on shelves. I dug through them all. And this Nirvana single, which was completely out of character for what was there, was near the bottom of the last stack I looked through. Most of the stuff was like from the 60s and 70s. Most of it was common. A lot of it was in bad shape. I did get a, I did get a, I did probably get a couple hundred singles because they were like 10 cents each. And I was getting stuff that I wouldn't pay for a dollar for. But here's one I would have paid a dollar for, but I was happy to pay 10 cents for it. This is uh, the Garage Rock Classic Psychotic Reaction by Count Five. This was found uh, digging on the same day that I found that Nirvana record. And so the song Psychotic Reaction, I think it was on that original Nuggets compilation. And lots of people have covered it over the years, just like lots of people have covered White Rabbit over the years. I know that one of the, uh, somebody who covered Psychotic Reaction Live a lot was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And so Tom Petty would play the harmonica and Stan Lynch, who was his drummer at the time, would be the lead vocalist when they played it live. So obviously, usually Petty is the lead vocalist, but they would switch up things there. But another group that would also perform Psychotic Reaction Live is the Cramps. So you got the crazy psycho Billy going on. So this is a compilation called Off the Bone. So, of course, you'd have Lux and Terry. He would do the harmonica and the vocals. Poison Ivy would do the guitar. Now, it's not on this particular comp. I don't know if they ever released it on record, but they did have a song called Human Fly. Um, you can see that's the very first song on this particular comp. And so I started thinking about humans, and so I started thinking about humans, and I started thinking about the Human League. Because the Human League, even though um, this record's about the same vintage as the Cramps, couldn't be much more different as a group. And so, of course, the Human League wore lots of makeup, and I was basically referring to the guys in the band. And, of course, at least in America, the most famous song that the Human League did was Don't You Want Me, a um, classic video that we watched a lot on MTV. And then Don't You Want Me kind of triggers the thought in my head of I Want You to Want Me. So that was a Cheap Trick song. And so it's probably most famous for being on that Cheap Trick Live at Budokan album, which I only have on CD and I didn't pull out the CD. But it, the song originally appeared on the studio album called In Color. And of course, one of the things about Cheap Trick was they put the two cooler guys on the front cover and they put the two geeky guys on the back cover. This is something they did on a bunch of their albums. And then there they are in the gatefold as well. And so now another album that Cheap Trick has that I don't own is called The Dream Police. So that got police going in my head. And so what was the, uh, the police's, probably my favorite police album was their debut by the police, which is Outlandos de Amour. And of course, you've got famous songs by like Roxanne and they've got a song called Hole in My Life. And so now we're, I think we're at just about at the bottom of our rabbit hole here, Hole in My Life. But of course, there was a cover of Hole in My Life that I think is better than Sting's version by Juliana Hatfield because everything in my channel eventually comes around and is Juliana Hatfield. And I think Juliana Hatfield basically owns Hole in My Life now rather than Sting. 
There we go. Ten minutes down the rabbit hole.